I'm Soledad O'Brien. Welcome to Matter of Fact. It was one of the most popular campaign catchphrases in recent history. It's the economy, stupid. Those four words help send Bill Clinton to the White House. Well, today the economy is booming, high job numbers and low unemployment. President Trump is taking credit for the economy, but on the campaign trail, Republicans are almost avoiding it. Dems have seized the moment saying, yeah, the economy's growing, but the average person's paycheck is not. And even though Republicans promised the tax cuts would unleash rapid wage growth, is this a tale of two economies, one national, one local? Nell Abernathy is head of research and policy at the Roosevelt Institute. It's so nice to have you. Thanks for having me. You bet. So S&P close to an all-time high. As we mentioned, unemployment is the lowest since I think it's 2000. Mm -hmm. And employers are saying we actually can't get enough people through our doors. And yet when you poll workers, 45% say the economy does not feel good. How do you... How do you justify those two contradictory things? This is the great puzzle of the economy for at least the last decade, if not longer. We've seen these record corporate profits, high GDP growth, low unemployment, but that's not translating into gains in real wages or a reduction in cost of living for average people. And that's a mystery. When you have low unemployment, you should see wages go up. The economy is clearly not working the way we think it should. And is it um, a mystery that could be solved when you say, well, the people who are running the companies are keeping the wealth in the company or keeping it with shareholders mm -hmm. and not, and are, it's as simple as they're not putting the money into wages. I think it is that simple. This is something that has been a product of about 40 years of policy that has benefited largely shareholders, large corporations, CEOs, at the expense of workers and small businesses, but we could do things differently. It's a choice. These aren't the inevitable results of natural laws. Often when we talk about the economy or we talk about jobs, everyone refers back to uh, coal miners. When I was reading a statistic that said there are more people who work at Arby's than are coal miners in the United States. Why do we often focus on that relatively small number of workers versus retail workers, who is a much bigger population spread across the nation, and they are really struggling. I think that's a great question, and that's really, I suspect, more of a political question than an economic one. I think it speaks to a couple of things. First of all, coal mining jobs were good jobs. They were very hard jobs, but they paid well. Secondly, they're mostly white men. And you sort of expect the national dialogue these days to focus on what's good for white men, whereas a lot of retail workers are women or people of color. That said, I do think the coal miner narrative speaks to the insecurity an average worker feels, that if your job, for some external reason that has nothing to do with you, gets taken away, what are you going to do? We have decimated the safety net and we've not created the kinds of conditions that create a lot of good jobs. So you, you don't have a lot of options. We just saw, despite these numbers of a hugely growing GDP for the quarter, that more seniors are declaring bankruptcy than we've ever seen before. I was gonna ask you about that and why is that? Well, there's a number of reasons. First, they just don't have the retirement security previous generations because had. We've in transferred. Investing it in their kids. Well, that's one major, major reason. Those who do have savings have huge medical expenses often that make them go bankrupt. They've co signed student loans that their kids have defaulted on, and that's made them go bankrupt. Or they just never had the savings in the first place because when you're not making a good living, it's hard to you know, be stocking it away for retirement. Now, as we head into the midterms, what do you think is the messaging that's gonna resonate? And I know this is kind of a political mm -hmm. question for an economist, um, but clearly they're linked, right? Being able to talk about frustration with the economy can be a winning political message. I think that's right. I think you, you said it well in your introduction. Re Republicans on the campaign trail are not talking about the tax cut. There's a reason they're not talking about it when they talk to voters. Voters don't feel the benefits. They don't feel 4.1% GDP growth. That means nothing to you if your job is part-time or that you're piecing together jobs or you have maybe a good job and you still can't afford the things that are really the cornerstones of a middle-class life. Healthcare, college, retirement, housing. 
That's not just the economy we all have to learn to accept in the 21st century. We can make changes. I think that that is going to be a message that resonates. Nell Abernathy, so nice to have you. Thank you. Thank you. you bet.